uh, issues. Okay, got it. <laughs> Two rather disconnected stories. One of them is a story of the early years of the state of Israel. And the second one is the down of the digital era. I think that you will agree with me that to begin with, it's uh, quite uh, a, of an exception that there is such a meeting point. And this meeting point is uh, where the Weizsack project happens. So in terms of Israel studies uh, of the early years, <laughs> Now it okay, of the early years of the state in Israel and in Israel studies in general, there are two main questions that our research uh, touches upon. The first one is the, the question of science and technology in the Zionist ideology and in the Zionist project. We have been discussing this topic here over the last weeks, and uh, something that is closely connected with it, but it's not the same, is the idea of the role of science and technology in nation building. So not just at the, oh, come on. No, there's nothing here. It's, uh, I mean, you need to take this out. No, no, no. Okay. Okay. So. <clears throat> okay, so as I said, one is the point of the ideology and the other one is what happened actually in the process of nation building. And what is the role of the Weizsack in that, uh, in that uh, particular <coughs> Can I go on? Just one moment, they, they want to share this. Yes, sure. No, no, no. Oh, okay. Now is it shared? Yeah, yeah, I For the history of technology, the points that I want to refer to are two. One of them is the question of the process of adopting existing technologies, because this is what the White Rights Act was about. And the second one is the point of the creation of a supportive te technological ecosystem. That is to say how the VISA contributed to create an ecosystem where the development of electronic computing and particularly in science, but not only would then take place. So these are the two main axes of the, of the idea and of the, of the work that we have been doing, especially in the first part of our work. And if we look at the question of the adoption of existing technologies and that of science and technology in nation building, they also locate us in a global context because the story that I am going to say is not, it, it has of course the specific points that belong to what happened here in Israel, what happened with the Bikes Act. But at the same time, there is a global story of other countries, other contexts, uh, geographic, uh, especially in, um, in Europe, but not only, like you see here, the details of other machines that were built at the same time, and the Weizsack is only one of them, but one which is very special. So when, I'm, when I speak about the down of the electronic computer era, this is a question that people ask in this regard, when does the electronic uh, uh, computer start? And I don't want to go into that debate, but I want to indicate what is the point that I choose as the one that is relevant for us here. And it is specifically the point that, that makes the difference that we want to talk about is one is the one that has to do with the store program idea. Okay, so before we had computers that were digital as opposed to analog, multipurpose as opposed to special purpose, and even programmable electronic as opposed to electromechanic. But only when we have all these points together and the store program idea is that we have something which is really different and relevant. For example, if we look at the, I'm sorry, at the ENIAC here, which was a very important machine in the, <coughs> sorry, in the war um, effort. So um, this was a very advanced machine. It was programmable, but it was not a stored a program machine. And something had yet to happen 
The main two people involved in this project were Eker and Mokli, and uh, they also contributed to moving to the store program uh, machine. But they, of course, the crucial contribution was that of John von Neumann. And John von Neumann came with the idea of the uh, what we call the von Neumann architecture, which has some uh, characteristics, but one which is the central one is that of the store program. So he wrote this famous paper, the draft, but he also was involved. Uh, I have to say also, I put this slide specially so that I am not asking them, what about Turing? So Turing was also involved in some kind of thing, but not part of our story. And I leave it aside. But yes, he was also involved, not with his paper of 36, but what he did in Manchester in the mid 40s. But von Neumann was involved in the construction of perhaps the most important machine in this story, which is that of the, uh, the Institute at Princeton. And it was a store program uh, a machine. He was the leading person in terms of the conception of what has to be do uh, done. This uh, computer was built between 45 and 51. And other than uh, von Neumann, also Julian Bigelow, who was the main engineer, is a very central person at that. And this machine was influential. Also, it was very important itself, but it was also copied or reproduce it in many other places in the world. So it is really a, a, a milestone in the history of electronic computers. And of course, also in our story. Now here, I don't know why I cannot get rid of it, but uh, something a little bit different. It's okay. So it's important to understand the project, who were the people involved? Because when we speak about copying the idea of the IIS machine, it was it, the copy was not only of the architecture or some technical details, but also of the entire idea. What do you have to do if you want to build such a machine? And the people that we see here are uh, von Neumann, who was the uh, sorry, von Neumann, who was the scientist entrepreneur. Bigelow, I already said, the chief engineer. But here there are other two important people. One of them is Oppenheimer, who was the institution builder and the national project leader, and Hermann Goldstein, who was the link with the military industrial complex in the United States. Now that this uh, um, structure uh, also was important for what was done here in Israel, is immediately seen, for example, in this very interesting picture where you see von Neumann, Bigelow, Oppenheimer, but also Estri and Ephraim Fry, who were two very important figures in the project. So the connection is personal, organic, and not only technological. So the people involved, and also, of course, uh, Pekeris was a good friend of Oppenheimer, and he was very strongly connected with things going on over there. And uh, von Neumann understood that Pekeris would be the right person to undertake this project. And he, in a letter to Esri, he said, this guy Pekeris is extremely versatile, hardworking guy. Moreover, I guarantee you that if nobody else uh, in the country does anything to use that machine, he will keep it busy for full time by himself. And this is actually what happened. And uh, he, he knew uh, they, they collaborated, they knew each other well, and they, uh, von Neumann was very supportive of the process. And it is important to understand that Weizsack, uh, was there, there was a question about whether for a young uh, state like Israel, it was the right choice. And some people were opposed, but von Neumann supported it very much. And then uh, uh, also uh, what we, the, he, he had the right, or there was the right person to do it. But in terms of the institution, we have other people here. So the institution was the Weizmann Institute. I'm not going to tell the entire story of the Weizmann Institute, but other than Weizmann, there were people who were central to this. One of them is Bergman, who was the closest person to Weizmann until some point. And then he was not anymore because he moved to the other camp, which was the, the one of Ben Gurion. And then uh, Weisgal, who was uh, in the, the then, the, oh, sorry, who was the closest 
the, clo sorry, the closest person uh, to Weizmann, Mayor Weizgal, and uh, uh, Becker is not, knew very well that he needs Weizgal, first of all, to support him, and he, <coughs> he was very, uh, a, a, he had the ability to understand the political situation also within the Institute, and here also Benjamin Bloch, he was uh, a, also a, in the management of the Institute, and then, as I said, like in the other machine, we have Pekeris, who is the scientist entrepreneur. We have Estrin, who was the chief engineer. And I like this picture because you cannot have it more geek than this, right? <laughs> but you have uh, other pictures of him where he's a little bit less of a geek. <laughs> he, he was a great engineer. And it is important to state, even though I cannot go into details about it, that I will say many, many things about which I will not give the details, but I just want to present the entire map of the work as we see it, Raya and I. And another very important person in the project was Talma Estrin. It was uh, uh, his wife, of course, and she was a very important and very um, um, ingenious engineer involved in the project. And I, I, we thought we have to mention her because otherwise they, we don't have the entire story. This was a project that at some, at, at some point became a, a matter of national interest. There was a lot of advertising and here Ben Gurion comes to speak with Micha Kedem and with the Shalit. And when the computer started to work, it was announced in, in all the, the, uh, the, the important newspapers of the country. One Salamishman, I know many of you don't know it, but it was an important uh, <laughs> newspaper. I, I was a subscriber until its last day, so I thought it's important <laughs> to mention it here, but just to have the sacrosanct balance here in place. So all sorts of things, they exactly the same thing, right? The more <laughs> electronic was a, a time. And it was, it was an important event in the story in, 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 in Israel. So, we, this is the first book we published, Raya and I, and it tells the story of the Weizsack, how it was created, and what were the problems, political, in, in terms of uh, academic politics, uh, uh, and beyond, uh, how was the project conducted, and so on. And uh, uh, we now move to the second part, which I am going to speak more about, which is about how exactly Pekerich applied the machine for achieving important uh, uh, scientific results, okay? So hopefully it will be published soon in Springer as it was the first one. And uh, we can never know nowadays with Springer how things work, but uh, it is supposed to appear there someday. And uh, the art of applying mathematics, well, we took it from some uh, document about Pekeris, but uh, we thought that it, it's a nice uh, title, the art of applying mathematics with bytes. And as part of our project, we also intend very soon to go into other uh, parts of it, which is the creation of a discipline of a, a, a computer science in Israel, especially in Rehoboth, but not only, and the work, the, the role of pioneering women in computing in, in, in Israel, uh, probably, hopefully, we go on to other things. Of course, the story of computing in Israel is not just the Weizsack, it's not just Rehoboth and Pekeris, but we have to go slowly going with all the details of the story. So, and I have also to say that the Weizsack history is not an unknown one. We didn't discover it, even Raya didn't discover it in her dissertation, but certainly uh, what she did, which was the first part of this project, was to uh, go into very intensive and interesting archival research. And the main two things there was the uh, research in Pekeris, archive and also the uh, <coughs> use of uh, interviews that had been done with the veterans by Estrin and Solomon and also Lee Segel who also published interviews. So there were, uh, using this, uh, Raya went on to publish uh, or to create a dissertation, but the, to write a dissertation and then we moved on. So at uh, the first uh, book uh, on the bikes, on the bikes act, we, uh, the, the main topics were how the, uh, uh, how an institution, the Weizmann Institute, was created and used or formed the base for uh, the project, for the possibility of creating such a project. And of course, Pekin is as a central figure into that. And then exactly how this was done. There was a technological challenge. It, of course, money had to be raised and many other things. In the end, we call, we call it a Zionist success story in the sense 
that it, it was part of this uh, idea, we compared it with other projects of nation building, science and technology as part of nation building, but also because uh, it was the, let's say, the science infrastructure which allowed the construction of this machine. Just to give you an example, uh, the, the, the memory, the core memory of the machine was uh, it, such as that memory existed three in the entire world. So it was not just a matter of money. You have to be able to bring the, the materials, etc. And the memory, of course, is a great challenge. And the guy in Detroit, Morris Cohen, one who had built this, uh, this uh, memory uh, as, a, as, a, as a Zionist act, he said, I will give it, uh, uh, or I will sell it uh, to this project. And, uh, and so it was possible. So if you, oh, I forgot to bring the books. Uh, but you can you can look at it in the internet. You can even buy it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but this was the uh, ah and there is a little uh, uh, over here the scientific challenge the early impact the early impact of uh, of the Weizsack was immediately recognized because very important articles were written uh, uh, or, or the, the, the the project was carried out with the Weizsack. Also, the international status of the Weizmann Institute was supported and enhanced by this. And clearly, many of the fields that we become hardcore innovative research in Israel started with the Weizsack. And as I said, the creation of the human and the institutional uh, infrastructure for creating a culture of computing, courses, programming, whatever you want. So, this, is, this was still in a very general way in the first book. And just to give you an idea, because now I will say more in detail about what Pekeris actually did, but already very early, the, the impact was known internationally. So for example, this quotation, we have many like this, but this one is by Chantra Shekhar, a very important physicist, Price Nobel. He said in 62, it, I think it can be fairly said that the, that the record of what has been accomplished at the Weizmann Institute with the Weizsack under the leadership of Pekeris is unequal in the world. The uniqueness of this accomplishment derives not so much from the high quality or the large quantity of work that has been done as from the fact that Pekeris and his associates have for the first time used electronic computer for the solution of problems which one could not literally have dreamt of solving before. And I think this is a, a, a very, um, a, a precise description of the situation, but one has to describe it in, in detail. What does it mean? And this is what I want to show you now in what remains uh, in the talk. So, high Pekeris and the art of applying a uh, mathematical pattern. What is it exactly? What did he achieve between 55 and 63 with the Weizsack? Because he did many other things with the other machines in the Institute the Golem A, Golem B, and some other machines that were bought. I'm speaking only about Weizsack today. So a little bit about uh, Pekeris. He was born in Lithuania and moved very early on to the United States. All, all his family were, were exterminated in the Holocaust. He studied at MIT, mathematics. And then in 33, he, uh, started, uh, his uh, dissertation was in meteorology. This is very important because meteorology at the time was a kind of new discipline very computer, computer intensive, computational intensive, not with electronic machines, but co computing. This is, this is the important thing of the whole story, how things move from a world in what there was started to be computer, intensive computations for various fields of physics. And then when the, in, in, when the electronic computer came in, it, it, it was not a starting point. It was a continuation, but a big jump into a new world, actually. So, he then started to deal with geophysics, hydrodynamics, astrophysics, you name it. And of course, in the war, he was involved in military research and already hands-on experience with electronic computer. Not stored program, but electronic, uh, programmable, etc. In 1945, he applied for a position at the Hebrew University and he was rejected. He was not good enough or not adequate enough, as I will explain in a minute. Then he remained in the United States working with the machine of the Institute, and he uh, joined the committee of the, of the Weizmann Institute. And already <coughs> in 1948, he uh, came to Rehoboth and became the head 
of the Department of Applied Mathematics, of, he, of which he was head until 1973, when he retired. So a very interesting question is why he was rejected, or more importantly, what is the meaning of the fact that he was rejected at the Hebrew University, and then he created this important center in Republic? So again, I will be very, very, very schematic, but I will say at least the keywords, okay? Love it. Huh? <laughs> so I think that we, we see here something very interesting about the creations of two the creation of two institutions of higher education and research in Israel, the Hebrew University in 1925 and the Weizmann Institute in 47, which embody different views of Zionism and different views of science and the connections. Zionism in the sense that, again, schematically, the university represented for many people who were behind that initiative, a center of spiritual, uh, um, uh, let's say, um, importance for the project of Zionism seen as a center for the Jewish people, a national home, not necessarily a state, and then, following in terms of science or, or of academy in general, the uh, German uh, ideal of neo-humanistic institutions, as it was the German, the, the Berlin University. And the, what happened in, in the Weizmann uh, Institute was different. But the interesting thing is that we can even be more focused on this and speak only about mathematics. So we have two different views of mathematics. One of them is embodied in the in the what started as the Institute of Pure Mathematics in the Hebrew University, led by um, Landau, who was the ultimate representative of the neo-humanistic idea of mathematics in German, in Germany. And you can see by his style, by the topics he dealt with, and also Frankel was a follower of that and mathe applied mathematics. You mean you mean Edmund Landau, not Lev Landau. Huh? Sorry? It is very important for the audience to mention that you mean the mathematician Edmund Landau, not the physicist Lev Landau. <laughs> right. Well, actually, when he came to Israel, <laughs> yeah, but call me Shabbat. Uh, when he came to Israel, he immediately adopted the name Yeheskel. Landau, who was his great grandfather and a very important rabbi in Prague. And this is not just a, a, you know, a side comment. It was part of what he saw as the renewal of the Jewish people, etc. This talk is not about the Hebrew University, but it is, but the point is the difference between that and then what happened in 1947 with the establishment of the uh, Weizmann Institute, which is a completely different kind of idea of what is science. Again, schematically, we should speak here about applied science uh, as opposed, or I have to be very careful, to uh, fundamental science, which at the beginning was not part of the plan. Uh, applied mathematics and an entire uh, uh, set of conceptions and about the possibility of becoming a center which would provide immediate support to industry and so on. Not everyone in the Weizmann Institute agreed with that. This is part of the disagreement between Bergman, Bergman and Weizmann and so on. But again, just to throw in all the, all the topics you know, uh, that are involved in this story. When, when yes. the, the, the Technion is a different story because it, it's part, this is not part of the beginning of the Zionist story because it was found by the Ezra, um, how do you call that, the corporation, and it was a German thing. It started in 1912, but then came the war. Actually, they started 20 something, right? But this is not at the beginning part of the Zionist story and the connection with the, or, or an outcome of the plans of the Zionist institutions. That the, the Hebrew University was created as a, as a consequence of decisions that were taken in the Zionist Congress, okay? The further thing and so on. Okay, so just to say, Two different ideas of science and two different ideas of what of Zionism, active Zionism, political Zionism. Not everyone involved in the Hebrew University was that. And Becker is, uh, of course, for he he had very clear ideas of what he wanted to do. 
And this is a little bit late, but I could have brought uh, different uh, or similar uh, quotations. The Gentiles say that we Jews are not qualified in the engineering profession. profession. And there were days when we heard the same argument regarding agriculture and military service. And the Zionist movement came and changed it. We cannot ignore the fact that today we have another Zionist mission to instill engineering in the Jewish intelligentsia. We do not succeed in engineering because we, we do not value it. The Jews do not succeed in engineering because do, they don't hold to this profession. I believe that these days the problem is essential to the very existence of the state and perhaps to the whole nation. We have to do applied work in engineering. I think that this is enough to give the idea of why I want to say about the role of some kind of mathematics as opposed to other and a conception of the role of science and technology in Zionism and the role of Zionism as part of the, of the politics of the, of the Jewish people. So in the new book, as I said, it's, all, it's, all, it's ready essentially, but the, you know, things take time. So what, what, did, what did we explore in this book specifically? So first thing is to speak about numerical analysis in the age of electronic computer. Numerical analysis as we know it, uh, more or less started in the, in the 20s in Germany with Karl Runge and the methods of Runge Kutta for uh, um, ordinary differential equations. And also in Gettingen with Courant and his students, then they moved to the United States uh, with the creation of uh, methods or the development of methods and theories uh, related to partial differential equations. So these two things start to develop. And again, at some point when the electronic computer comes in, something very important happens, but some of the basic ideas were already there. And also very, very important, the creation of international institutions devoted to the development of numerical methods for solving physical problems. This is a very interesting story in itself. It has to do, for example, with Italy, where they, uh, the, Actually, they were connected to the fascist movement and they were very active in the uh, aerodynamics uh, industry and so on, aeronautic industry. So we devoted to this. I'm not going to speak about that today, but it's part of the story. Of course, all of this that was then applied in the other fields where Pekeris and his collaborators were active. So the first one that we devoted to is the field of integral equations and particularly the Boltzmann-Gilbert equation related to the behavior of gases. Again, then you can see by the names that this started in Germany in the 10s and in the 20s. Uh, Hilbert developed methods that turned the solution of a specific kind of integral equations into something that is amenable to computing methods. And the, and, and the, and the Pekeris, like all other fields, he started to study this early, so not when he uh, was looking for things to do with computing, with electronic computer. He started with his interest as an applied mathematician, uh, one that is uh, 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 very much interested in numerical methods, and then he went into this field. The next one is the issue of the oscillation of the Earth. I will speak a little bit more about this, but this is related more generally to a broader issue, that is the geophysical research in Israel connected to geophysical research in the entire world and questions about seismography, also very important and very interesting. Also very strongly related to questions of nation building because it was related, of course, to the issue of looking for oil in Israel and for water. So also it received a lot of attention. I will show you one or two things uh, about uh, how they, the, the, the national press covered it and so on. Ground state of the helium, a very important physical problem. I will say a few words about it. Also here, I will be very, very schematic. And then other works with Weizsack that were done either by Pekeris himself or by other people. Um, I forgot what is over here, but the nuclear magnetic resonance, atomic space, spe spectroscopy and some other. For example, you can move those people. I, no, I think I can move them. Ah, maybe. Ah, okay, ferromagnetism. Ah, too bad. <laughs> ferromagnetism. And the, this is very important in, also in the sense of other people who are involved. For example, Julio Rakas, who was the leading physicist in 
Jerusalem. He was a, a strong user of the Visak and his students. This is a, a, a large story about nuclear research in Israel, and the work of uh, Amir Cohen, who we discuss, discuss, discuss here. So uh, the, there is a very interesting story about how the nuclear, the young nuclear physicists were trained for doing computations of energy levels with the Weizsack, and at some point they revolted against that. Uh, we don't want to do that anymore, not because of a, a political, perhaps also, but just they were tired about that kind of physical research. They wanted to do other things and not just to do what Raka wanted them to do. So, and here also, as you see, nuclear <coughs> magnetic resonance, uh, many things that became very important in, in the Weizmann Institute uh, later on. So this is, these are the topics of our book that where we explore more in detail. And let's now uh, go into some detail about what exactly Pekerich did. So in each of these chapters, what we do is to give a historical uh, account of the development of each of the main problems that pay or the fields uh, with specific problems within it that Pekerich was involved in. And how at some point, uh, where after the physical questions were more or less addressed with some uh, dead ends or whatever, and some things were still unsolved. And the mathematical tools that allowed a, a computational solution to the problem were developed. We see precisely that at that point, as Chandrasekhar said, without an electronic computer, there was a kind of threshold that could not be uh, overcome. There were groups of co computers, there were me mechanical computing machines, there were many things. But the passage to the electronic era with a store um, uh, program store, with a store program uh, approach uh, and architecture and so on, this completely changed the panorama of each of these very important uh, fields of physics or chemistry. There. Another interesting question is here, what is the border between physics and chemistry? And I, I don't have really the answers, right? I, but okay, this, we should go into more detail for that and I will not go. So what is this question of the ground state of the two electron atoms? Basically, what we have here is a, um, an embodiment of the three body problem, uh, but in a quantum mechanic context, okay? So the, I guess that some of you know that the three body problems is a very uh, the three body problem is a very difficult problem. Uh, Poincaré made an important contribution at the end of the 19th century in terms of certain configurations and in the astronomical scale. And here, if we have the molecule of helium, we have a center, and then two uh, electrons going around. We have if we want to describe what is going on there, we have a, a, an instance of the three body problem. So if we, uh, in, the, in, the, in the quantum uh, uh, mechanical context, we have the Schrodinger equation that is supposed to describe the behavior of the uh, electrons and the way that the energy um, uh, uh, behaves in certain circumstances. And the, <clears throat> On the other hand, we have the experimental values that were measured along time. So it's not just a matter that, that also uh, what I want to stress is that also the experimental methods were uh, improving all along, right? And they had all the time very uh, more precise uh, uh, results about the levels of energy. For example, the, 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 the important question, the so-called the ionization potential, which is, when the energy becomes so that one electron is expelled from that atom, okay? So these were the kind of, uh, uh, of uh, measurements that were done by the uh, experimentalists. And the question was whether mathematicians, physicists can find an analytic solution to this equation in order to check that the values obtained were in accord with the experimental values. But this is very, very difficult to do and hence, an alternative is to look for numerical solutions. Now, looking for numerical solutions is not something that at the time, at least, was very highly considered because the idea was that we need to find analytic 
solutions. And, but some people, nevertheless, uh, that were uh, in, a, in, a, in a different course of uh, ideas, say, no, let's go for the numerical solutions. And then there is an entire story of people working, trying to find the numerical solutions, uh, calculating, developing methods, and so on, and comparing all the time to the experimental values and to try to determine the extent to which the equation actually describes correctly the, the physical uh, situation, right? So, well, there are some people in this story, not all of them well known, but still important. For example, Egil Hileras, who is a Norwegian a physicist, studied in Göttingen with um, Born. And he went back to Nor at the beginning, in, he was also in Berlin, he developed his methods. Uh, he used variational methods, translated them into numerical uh, situations. And he also had this machine that was very important at the time. Okay, this is called the Schnell-Rechner machine, the fast calculating machine, okay? And the, with using this machine, he was able to obtain results, but there were, of course, disagreement with experimental ones and so on. It was clear that there is a lot of work to be done uh, as going on. But yeah, he is. Hilarious. <laughs> then come these two people here, James and Coolidge in, at Harvard University. And in 1933, they developed an approach called parametric coordinates. I, I give this, uh, I mentioned them, I could mention many other people, but they, just to give an example of how, <laughs> by looking at the specific physical situation, uh, they could, the, these two people and some others later, they could come up with more, uh, with simpler uh, uh, mathematical uh, formulations of the problem. Uh, they could reduce with the, the number of degrees of freedom of the equations involved and so on. So they did very important work. And they also it's important because uh, Pekeris in his work used this approach or followed this approach of the parametric coordinates. So just to give you some uh, uh, milestones along the way. And this is very interesting because this guy Hartley, he was a British uh, mathematician who was involved. He, he is known most of all for his work in numerical analysis. He was a very important organizer of these institutions that I mentioned, but he was also involved in uh, physical questions in computation. So he went to MIT, and at the time, the machine that was used there was the analytic um, um, analyzer. analyzer of Banavar Bush, which is an analogic machine. So I, I mentioned it to see that things don't go in a straight way. So he came back, he was with his father over there, and they came back and they constructed something very similar to the analytic analyzer with a mechanic. So uh, they could do very uh, advanced calculations, but with different methods that are not the ones that then you can reproduce and follow with a digital machine, because this one is analogic. And, and it, like Vladimir Bush has done important work on video dynamics and things like that. So the same goes here for Hart. So at some point, Pekeris published his article in 1958, I will not go into all of, all of the details, but I want to show you something which is very beautiful or very not beautiful, it's ugly, but it's surprising. <laughs> this is the, so Pekeris took all this situation and started to apply his simplifications, um, changes and so on. And in the end, in order to solve the equation uh, or the equations, um, numerically, he reached this uh, monster equation of 30 terms that, moreover, was translated into systems of linear equations that this is what he solved with the machine. So he, there were many interesting developments about the use of matrices for uh, solving the linear equations. And in fact, at some point, he was able to solve a system of 1,078 uh, equations with 1,078 uh, um, uh, variables. unknowns variables. variables. And the interesting thing is the following, that this is all of this uh, order of the 1 million uh, words, let's say. And the RAM of the machine was 4K, okay, so this is nothing. So the interesting thing here is to see how Peckett, on the one hand, took the, the physical situation, 
the mathematical tools, and then also the ability to create. It, it, all of this has to do with the ability to transform the basic matrices into equivalent matrices, which are very sparse, diagonal, many things that make the possibility, the, make the solution of this system possible. Okay, if you just, you know, it, let's say in the end it's root force. Uh, they, this is what the machine brings, the root force. But before applying root force, you have to prepare the ground. And this is what Pekelis did brilliantly in this case. So I will just say about this article, ah, so how, how close did he come? The, the ionization potential here is this number that you see here. And at that time, Herzberg, who, was a, who won the Nobel Prize for his work on these measurements, uh, had this measurement. You see, it's very, very, very close. And this was certainly taken as a corroboration of the values and, of course, of the equation. And this article, ah, so here also, I, I don't have much time, but we can see here how this project took most of the time of the Weizsack during the period in question, okay? So they were working very, very hard over there. And uh, I didn't mention all the collaborators in this project. I will mention others uh, later, but at least one has to mention here, uh, Pinchas Rabinovich, who was a, a great expert, a world-class expert in, the, in the numerical analysis. And he had also the, um, the um, programmers and so on. So this article, Sorry, this article, you know, just to give you an idea, the physical review in these years published 14,000 articles. This one ranked 80 in the eight places of importance of citations, 800 citations at the time. It was really a, a, a landmark. In the physical reviews of 95, which was the centenary edition, they uh, mentioned a quarter of a million of articles. And Pekeri's article was among the first thousands. So, you know, you can bring many, many testimonies about how the, co the community, not what I think, the community, so we need a, a very big breakthrough. Let's move now to geophysics, okay? Sorry for doing this so quickly, but we don't have uh, much time. You don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, I, I'm looking over. But we started a little bit yeah. later, but uh, don't worry. Leo. So, yeah. Oh, Leo, I would like to have interject one remark before I continue. Uh, you see, if, if there is anyone who is now, nowadays a student of applied mathematics, he would never recognize it as a field of applied mathematics. In 1964, when I was still in high school and working with one of his lieutenants, Frankowski, as I, I asked once Heimle Pekeris, what is applied mathematics? So he turned <laughs> to the board at his big office and wrote on the board that classical physics. <laughs> I, I'm not sure how many people will agree with that definition, but it, 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 well, it served me well for all my scientific career because it exactly fits what I was interested in as a student of high school of, uh, elect in electronics. Actually, I showed him my own uh, uh, analogic computer, which I have built as a project in high school. So this, this is close. But anyway, for, for today's student in mathematics or in implied mathematics, that sounds as physics, not as mathematics. So just to prove the taste change uh, very much through generation, what is what? Okay, and, and, and what I will say now just uh, it makes the case stronger, okay? So in why I, I, want to make, I, I want to mention here this article, which is Alterman Jarosz Pekin, okay? So the, it, Pekeris was highly influential in geophysics, but here it is very important to mention the collaborators, in particular, it's Zipporah Alterman, who's a very interesting personality that we want to speak more about her later on. But now I can say she created here the Department of Geophysics in this university. She had many students and students of students. Unfortunately, she died quite, she died quite young and she could not really uh, uh, develop all, all of the potential that she had, but in this particular article, she played an important role. And we, well, in this particular article, AGP, so it's a, a Alterman Jarosz Pekin. That is the right uh, order in which we should do So, what is this about the idea of free oscillations of the Earth? And the idea is that the Earth, I will not read all of this because I don't have much time, but the idea is that the Earth. As a, as a sphere has certain motions 
that are very difficult to detect. But Pekeris and Sipora Alterman and Diagos did, uh, did, he explains here what is a free oscillation, sorry, that I, that I uh, jumped the skip that. But they, again, they, there is a very important point to this particular story because of the following. We see here a convergence of, of circumstances that allowed this breakthrough. Uh, not all of the circumstances were under the control of Pekeris or anyone else. So one of them is the theoretical background that led to the, to the place where he was. Then the dramatic improvement of precision measurement tools for sismological situations. And then nature comes and destroys in a, in two big earthquakes that were very, very good for uh, seismologists and for Pekeris and Alterman in particular. So theoretical background has to do with the questions about the internal constitution of the earth and the elastic vibrations of a solid sphere in general. And here there is a long British tradition, you know, I don't make it just for name dropping, which is also good to do, but it, it is because just to show you the kind of people that were involved in this. So the Lord Kelvin, Lord Raleigh, and Sir Ora Slam, all of them very British people, and also uh, Love, uh, who was a, a very important uh, hydrodynamics uh, researcher. And in, in, in 1892, Lab, uh, Lab wrote this synthesis of all this work about either hydrodynamics and a sphere and so on. And the interesting thing is that these books are in Pekeris library. So we can go there and see where he had remarks and so on. Uh, and obviously it was the basis for his work. But the thing is that in the 19th century, the idea of the, of the earth is that you have a, a, the interior of the earth then there is a, a, a thin crust floating on a molten interior. But this changed very much as seismological evidence of variations in the velocity of waves at different depths created the evidence that things are a little bit more complicated. So there are all, all of these ideas about crash mantle in and outer core. I won't go into all of that, just to tell you that there was this, this, this uh, evolution also, for example, Adams and Williamson, their importance is that they develop uh, the mathemat they, they, they calculated or, or formulated the mathematical relationship between the, sys the seismic wave velocity and the compressibility and density of the rocks inside the earth. Most of their conclusions were wrong, but the methods were good. And people who came later uh, used them very wisely. One of them is this person here, Edward Bullen. He was from New Zealand and worked in, a, a, in a Australia. You know, just to show you that there are many, many, layers, sorry. And this other guy, Bullard, the interesting thing is first that they, their names are very similar, Edward Bullen and Edward Bullard. And one came up with six models and the other, so there were many models, but models only in the sense that what are the difference of the, uh, a depth of each of the layers, right? So this is the world into which Pekeris came as a researcher and from a theoretical point of view. The point of the, the, the precision measurement tools is it takes us to Pasadena, California, where in the Caltech Sismo Lab, there were these names. These names are the most famous one in seismology and Charles Richter is the one that you hear whenever there is an earthquake anywhere in the world, the Richter scale, he was the one who developed it. For us, more important is Hugo Benioff, who developed a new kind of seismograph that was very, very sensitive. Uh, here they describe how sensitive that, that if something moved one centimeter between the West and the East Coast of the United States, he would be able to measure it. So, this was a very, very uh, uh, an important improvement, and they didn't know what was going to happen next. What happened next is that nature destroys. So the first place where nature destroys is in Kamchatka, where there was a very uh, strong earthquake. And the important thing is that Benioff, with his seismograph, he measured two long periods of oscillation, one of 57 minutes, 100 minutes, and in seismic phenomena, 
This is not the situation. You have about 10 to 100 times per second. So Benioff it came with a conjecture that he had measured the free oscillations of the Earth. But the real story came later in 1960. The great Chilean earthquake in Valdivia was the epicenter. Uh, I know stories personally about this, uh, uh, the, uh, this earthquake. Uh, and the, but scientifically speaking, um, the interesting thing is that this happens in 1960. And we will come to it in a minute because I will only speak a minute about what they did in their research here, okay? What they did in this research was, as he said, to test the validity of value of hypothesis. So the first earthquake with the measurements creates an hypothesis that this, that say these are the free oscillations of the earth. And then they say, we're going to calculate it. And they came up with the calculations. Again, I have to skip. They examined the various models. And just to give you an idea of the calculations, you see, you see here a very nice thing that you have these jumps where the different layers with the different density produce different effects of the seismographic waves and so on. So this, they, they had this description of what happens in, at the geophysical level. And then one year later, in 1960, there is the International Conference of the Geophysics uh, and Geodesy. And two months before that, there is the big Chilean earthquake and people are measuring it. So all of these things, some of them very contingent to the story, they converge into that day when these things are analyzed. And there is a big drama because people had different measurements and there was a debate why and so on. I'll just tell you the report of the New York Times. Scientists detect air vibrations. First up, such observation is known in four laboratories after Chilean quakes resonance is forecast. Israeli professor furnished calculation. By the way, all of them spoke about Pekeris, not about Alterman, but that's how things worked in those days. And the, the, after this, so Pekeris also became the great authority of ge geophysics and seismological uh, calculations and so on. Again, you can just go into Google Scholar and to see that until this day, this article continues to be cited. So it, it was a real landmark. So pay attention, 58, 59, only that Pekeris has two big uh, landmarks in two quite separate fields. He also went on to other things, give me five minutes, okay? Again, in Israel, there was a lot of uh, resonance to this, uh, to this result and so on. Here is in the Yomat Smaut 64, terrestrial spectroscopy and computation. So there, there are many, many interesting things. Uh, as to, at the end, I just, at the end, and then a little end of half a minute. Pekinis was involved in two other activities that were incredibly interesting from the historical point of view and the connection between science and technology and the na nation building, which is the geographical survey, which was done in the 50 and 51, and oil in Helix, okay? He was the guy who was there to tell the people, you have to make the perforation here. And he was right. He was wrong about the quantity of the oil that would come out from there. But uh, he knew exactly where the oil was to be found. This is part of the geophysical survey. Pay attention. All of this is before the Weizsack. This is not part of the Weizsack project. And when the oil was, so here is Pekeris going around and in Helens, they put this uh, tower of preparation and so on. And, you know, September 3, 1952. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> oil came out from the, from the soil and there was a lot of, uh, even the Yiddish press. Uh, <laughs> oil in Israel, from the Itzige Schwenigkeiten to a Greuze Zukunft. But the Zukunft was not so Greuze as they thought, but still. And uh, more importantly, the British Foreign Office said the, this is the most important event that has happened in Palestine since the creation of the state. And he wrote to Newman and Oppenheimer, from Newman and Oppenheimer. He said, so so it, 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 this is what made that important connection between the Weizmann Institute, what Pekeris was doing, and the, and, and the creation of a, a 
of uh, important things from the point of view of the nation. I, I will put this uh, song later. I, I'm sure someone will. <laughs> so my last point, my last point, and this has to do a little bit with what Philip said before. First of all, Pekin has had many, many awards and distinction, Pras Israel, international, and all of them well deserved. But an interesting thing that happened, we're not sure about this, uh, Raya and myself, what really happened. In 1970, so the, in the Weizmann Institute, there were periodic reviews of the various departments, what they have done, what could be to improve, what could, what could be done to improve, and so on and so forth. And there was a commission to investigate or to survey the mathematical uh, department, Department of Applied Mathematics. Two very important researchers, one a mathematician from Illinois called Tau, and the other one was Frank Press, who was one of these leading uh, seismologists in the world. He became the science consultant of uh, Obama, no, not of Obama, of Carter. So he was a very active and very important scientist. And in their report, they said, there are many good things in this department and so on. But look, you have to put here some pure mathematics. This is not enough for an institute like the Weizmann Institute to do only this kind of thing. Very good, high quality, whatever. This is not enough. And Pekeris became crazy about this. Started to write letters to everyone. They're going to destroy our department and so on. All of this, we have the letters and everything. What we don't have is what happened between then and two years later when there was a department of applied mathematics. So <laughs> something happened there. Someone took the decision. Pekeris was already, let's say, an old man, not so old, but uh, he was not the he had not the same kind of influence, and it's very interesting. So here they created a new traditional. I think that the important thing I spoke about pure mathematics, applied mathematics, even the idea. So Philip said something about what is applied mathematics, and the, of course the kind of things that some of the people in Israel here in the world do. But today the idea of what is pure mathematics and applied mathematics, and then it has changed so much, and the map has changed. And we have uh, Professor Segal, for example, speaking to us every day about uh, the, how the uh, pandemic, uh, he's a mathematician, he's a department of mathematics. So this is not the kind of applied mathematics, but I think Pekeris would be very happy about this. Department. I know, I just conjectured it, I don't know. So that's the story. And as I said, in as much as you are interested in the details, both of the Weizsack project end of each of the projects conducted by uh, Pekinis. Some of them I mentioned, some of them I didn't. And the people around, I, we have a very long list of people who collaborated with him and who came afterwards and so on, that you can find in the book that is already out and the one who will hopefully will be out very soon. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, you know, that, you know, that, 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 uh, system for the new computer, the CNC 1604, which succeeded the white sack. It, it, it uh, allowed the, the white sack to be shut down. I was working sure. there for four years, and I, uh, until I read uh, your book and, and heard uh, the stories around it, I was never aware of the magnitude and importance of the research that was being done, done there. And thank you for that. <laughs> well, thank you very much. It's always to, to be aware of this kind of reaction. And I will tell you more. The interesting thing is that they, and not everywhere, but in many places where I go and say something, I discover more and more people who are involved. And also in this university, when the talk was announced, some of the Oh, all let's say all the professors here in physics and mathematics. So yes, I was there. Like Philip said now in his reaction, and David Horn also told me about, and some other people. And somewhere, 
I think that the most important thing is not only that who participated directly, but also the way in which we have done it with Raya and with Whitmore, the way in, in which the professional um, uh, community of people who were either programmers or technicians building the machines or scientists involved in calculations with the Weizsack or with the next um, uh, computers that you mentioned and so on. I, I think it's very nice uh, to see from the historical point of view, something that you cannot always see, which is a starting point and how it then branches. Or, uh, of course, that's also simple because it, the other place where things happen is in the technium, but that's a different story. We also have the story of the semiconductor industry in Israel. Many people who went to work there started also with Weizsack. Uh, people, Mamram and all these developments in the army were people who started working or le they learned the trade here working with Weizsack. And you, you yourself know, you have told, told that to the me. The Department of Applied Mathematics in Tel Aviv is offspring of the Weizsack. Exactly. So uh, I, that was the next thing I wanted to say. And uh, we have Mira Dean was a student of Philip Rabinovich. Uh, Philip, I, I think you were not that, uh, a direct student of anyone over there, but uh, as you said, you participated. And, and many other, uh, Flavian Rabi, uh, Abramovich was there. Is uh, is Schiff, Bernie Schiff, Flavian Abramovich. Was and what is more, the computer center, the first, the first guy who ran it, Tom Meyer, came from Weizmann Institute. Who was that? Um, when, they, when they made the first computer uh, center in Tel Aviv University, the guy who, had, who was in charge of the operating the whole system was Tom Meyer, who worked with Popeke Rice Weizmann Institute. So, so you see, it has a great impact. And I think that for us, as historians, it has been a very interesting experience. Because I say, as I said, the story is known. Everyone knows. And even we hear from me, Yonadav, he was there. But, the ability to reconstruct. I must say that I once heard this uh, piece of advice from John Hybrum. So, some of you know, he, he wrote a book, uh, you know, where was I about, about Hilbert, Dedekind. But when you write about things that then can, can make up someone like you know, or, or Philip and say, look, uh, or Aviezri Frankel, of course, one of the main people involved in it. You you took you you were able to reconstruct correctly and to and also to say things to say some things that we were not aware of. So that's nice. I, I like it. Yes, <laughs> 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 יש כאן כמה אנשים מסביב בחדר ואני אתייחס, אשתדל להתייחס לכולם אז תסמנו לי, תכתבו בצד או משהו שאני אדע מי רוצה לדבר ואני ארשום אתכם יש בצ'ט משהו כן, אז קטי So uh, you told quite an interesting story about the, uh, it was a successful story about yes. how the uh, Weizsack was uh, born and raised uh, yeah. here in Israel. So uh, I was wondering about points of failure yeah, in yeah. this process. You, you can probably imagine why I'm asking that. But uh, I, I just wanted to hear about uh, whether there were like um, obstacles that uh, yeah. uh, stood upon uh, uh, Pepper's way and how, uh, how did they reflect in his, uh, in what seems to be again yeah. a successful story, but how did it uh, yeah. come across? Uh, okay, yeah, story? historians are always looking for failure stories. <laughs> <laughs> um, Raya, you want to say something or you don't want me to answer? I, I, I don't hear uh, the question really clearly, but you can say if you have the volume. <laughs> if we feel for a, for a failure. <laughs> no, I think we, we well, we, 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 in the first part, I think failure is not uh, an important part of the story. 
when it was said. But there were many debates in optical. And as I indicated, this is something that appears very strongly in Raya's dissertation, is the very idea whether a computer has to be built. This is the first thing. Uh, there were debates, not everyone was interested in that. And in, in particular, you know, these are things, I heard this story about the, about the quantum computer uh, also, that people say, look, for, look they, you asked about the quantum computer, right? So I know that there is a debate that says, this is something that the state of Israel cannot undertake. We should not do that. We should, so, you know, in the state of Israel, at the beginning, there were so many things that people say we cannot undertake it, but there was someone who said, no, we have to undertake it, okay? A mobile or you can, you, you name it. And this was also the story here. But in the end, Pekeris, this is why we use the term in the, in the first book, a pioneering story, because this is, in, in many sense, this is the ethos of people who were pioneers in many other aspects of, of things that happen here in agriculture, in the army, you know, uh, you like more this, you like more that, but about the can-do uh, kind of spirit. They say, we are going to do that. So there were many obstacles. And another one that I have talked about, I have it because the, the microphone is like, okay, they want to copy uh, the IAS machine, but now you have to find the material. So they went to Alibi or I don't know, to see if they can find the valves, you know? Uh, where, where did they find it in the end? Right? I don't remember. In Alibi, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So that was the uh, operation of uh, buying things from uh, and importing the materials from the state. It was a, a big operation. Yeah. But you are right. I mean, I only said like it goes like this. No, there, there are difficulties. Leo. Yeah. I, I did say Asif Od Masho. Omnam Shea Vae Vaitsak Shua Ben Dodosha Amaniak. הוא נושא השיחה, אבל אולי yeah. כדאי להערה דווקא על אופן שבו גולם נבנה כדי להבין את מה שקרה בשנותיו האחרונות של פקריסק במרחוש מכון. המחושב גולם שנבנה בצלמו של מחשב באילינויס היה בדיוק מותאם לצרכים של פקריסק לחישובים הגיאופיזיים של עשרים וכמה. זה נבנה על תא זיכרון של שבעים וחמישה ביטס שעניין את פקריסק, אבל דווקא לפיזיקאים בהכרח לא היה הדבר הרצוי, רק שאז היה, זאת אומרת, המושכות היו בידיו של פקריסק. מה שקרה בשנים יותר מאוחר, שלפיזיקאים המשחק הזה איכשהו, נאמר את זה בדנות נמאס, והם הקימו את ערכס החישובים שמשלהם נפרד. כדי שיתאים לפיזיקה גרעינית וכן הלאה, ולא בהכרח לגיאופיזיקה, כי פקריס הלך ולחשבון יותר ויותר מורכבים, שלא בהכרח היו צנטר של עניינם של הפיזיקאים. וזה, שלא לדבר שאותן שנים חל ביזור של כוח החישוב במדינה. זה לא היו עוד שניים מחשבים במדינה, אלא יותר ויותר, וזאת אומרת גם היכולת לה, 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 להכתיב לאחרים מה ייעשה, הלך ופחת. כן, אתה צודק, ואני הייתי צריך אולי להגיד את זה, גם רעי יכולה להוסיף על זה, היה הגולם א' שתוכנן ולא בוצע, הנה, כישלון, אחר כך הגולם ב', זאת אומרת, יש פה הרבה דברים וזה נכון, שוב, אני הצטמצמתי, פיליפ, וגם אני עונה, וגם ביקרתי, לתקופה מאוד מאוד מסוימת, זאת אומרת, בספר הקודם אנחנו הלכנו די אחורה על בניית המכון וכל מה שקשור בזה, ההחלטה וזה, ומאוחר יותר, בטח עכשיו רק דיברתי, בתקופה הזאת של פקריס, זה פקריס ואנשים סביבו עובדים על הבעיות האלה ברוט פורס, אבל עם הרבה הרבה חוכמה. רוני? וזה גם מתייחס באמת להערות הקודמות, יש מאמר של גרשון שלום שהוא התפרסם בעזרות הרפורט ב-65 על הגודל נפרד והגודל נפרד, שכמובן משתמע ממנו גם הביקורת על ההיבטים ההרסניים שבמכונה, והוא גם בעצם מבקר בדיוק את מה שאתה מציג פה, הוא בעצם אומר שהוא בכלל מכיר בספק את השימוש במכונות בגודל כזה בפרויקט הציוני, והוא כמובן יש לו השאלות מרחיקות לכת ‫מצטער שבה ישמענו תגלו את ההצעה שלו ‫בתחום של מאטיות וטכנולוגיה, ‫שזה באמת קיצוניות אחרת. ‫אפשר לומר, אבל מעניין אותי באמת ‫לדעת גם אם היו עוד אנשים ‫שהתחילו לגלו את זה, ‫זאת אומרת, ‫לפרויקט הזה של המחשב ‫מקים
קורס פייל. המאמר האחרון שכתב בארץ, כל המאמרים שלו כתב בארץ, פורסם אחרי שעשה השאר הצעיר, פרסם את הניתוח הממוחשב של שני הישעיהו, ניתוח של הפרק. כותרת המאמר הייתה, לאלה מכירים שזה אומר משהו, נקבים נקבים חלולים חלולים, והמשפט הראשון היה המחשב מחרבן צועתו של האדם. זה המשפט של ה... כן, שאיש הספרות הנרגן, הוא כבר היה בדיכאון. אז תראו, אז תראו, רגע, כי יש פה עוד אנשים שרוצים לשאול, אני אענה בקצרה, אני חושב שיש לנו את המאמר של שונן, נכון, ראיה? אם אני לא טועה, ואני לא צריך למצוא אותו, אבל גם בן גוריון, יש לנו איזה ציטוט מאוד יפה, הוא הולך למסיבה אצל הבת שלו בזמנה, והיה שם בשלים וזה, ודיברו על האפשרות של המחשב כחושב וכן הלאה, אבל למה אתם הולכים כל כך רחוק? עד ימינו יש את הוויכוח הזה, האם האינטליגנציה מלאכותית זה ברכה או זה קללה או מה, זה כבר היה שם. מעניין לראות את זה אצל שונן, אז תשלחי לי את הלינק או מה שלא יהיה. סיון? סיון. כן, תודה. תודה רבה, זה היה מעניין מאוד להיות. אני רציתי להעיר על הסיפור שסיפרת על, על זה שהוא לא קיבל משרה באוניברסיטה העברית שנראה באיזשהו מובן כמו איזה טעות שהם עשו או משהו כזה ואני חושב שדווקא בזה שהם עשו את זה הם תרמו תרומה עצומה כי אני חושב שנראה לי זה קצת סובייקטיבי שהיה לו הרבה יותר קשה לעשות את מה שהוא עשה לעשות, לעשות כזה פרויקט משוגע בתוך מחלקה גדולה ומבוססת ועם יוקרה ועם, ועם כיוון אחר לגמרי. הוא היה מצליח להיות אולי מתמטיקאי שימושי מצוין בעברית, אבל הוא לא היה מצליח לעשות את, להקים פרויקט כזה, ואני חושב שזה אומר משהו חיובי על דייברסיטי, על, על זה שמחלקות שונות שיש להן גישות שונות לגמרי לאותו דבר, זה תורם תרומה עצומה לפעמים, וזה נשאר המון שנים. אמרת, בעברית נשאר להם קושי מאוד גדול בשימושית לאורך עשרות שנים אחר כך, זה לא משהו ש... עד היום יש להם קושי. בסדר, לא רציתי להגיד את זה ככה, אבל פיליפ צודק. אבל זה, אני חושב שזה יהיה מאוד יפה הדבר הזה, והעובדה שהוא הלך למקום, ארץ לא נודעת, לא מיושבת, והצליח לעשות משהו, זה, זה בין היתר בגלל זה שהוא נאלץ, הצירוף מקרים הזה, שהוא נאלץ להתחיל במקום חדש. אני... שלא לדבר שעד היום אין, אין, שעד היום אין שום הסכמה מה זה מתמטיקה שימושית. לא, אבל תראו, אני מסכים לגמרי עם סיוון, ואמרתי שאני הייתי... סכמטי. היה לי חשוב להציג את שתי הגישות, אבל האמת היא כזו, האמת היא יותר מסובכת. באוניברסיטה העברית לא היו כל כך הרבה תקנים במתמטיקה, ולמשל עיסאי שור, שהגיע מברלין, הוא היה ממש בקו של לנדאו, והיה בולט ביותר, גם הוא לא קיבל עבודה, כי לא היה מה לתת לו. אבל, אבל אני חושב שב... זאת אומרת, המקרה של פקריס, מדגיש את ההבדל בגישות, כמו שפיליפ אומר, אין הסכמה, בטח היום, מה זה, כשאני אמרתי מתמטיקה שימושית כאן זה מתמטיקה שימושית במובן הכי קלאסי שבא מה... בגלל זה הזכרתי את כל החבר'ה האלה מקיימברידג' שזה עם משוואות דיפרנציאליות כאלה ומי ש... היום אנחנו מבינים במתמטיקה שימושית משהו אחר לגמרי כולל הבית ספר שאתה עומד בראשו, שאנחנו רוצים להגיד משהו על, על, על האופן שבו מתפתח הרעיון הזה של מדעי המחשב. מה זה מדעי המחשב? זה לא מתמטיקה שימושית, זה כן, תלוי את מי נתפוס שם או את מי לא נתפוס. כל הנושאים האלה, נקרא להם, כמו שהילברט היה אומר על החלוקה של האקדמיה למחלקות, זה עניין בורוקרטי. יש לו בסיס אקדמי כמובן, אבל יש, יש כל מיני... סיבות להחליט שזה יעשה כאן ויעשה כאן. ואחרי שאמרתי את כל זה, זה ברור, אני חושב שאתה גם מסכים עם זה, שהאידיאל של המתמטיקה באוניברסיטה העברית, אז, פיליפ אומר, עד היום נניח, אבל בטח אז, ושל מכון ויצמן שהקים אותו, זה שני אידיאלים שונים, ומה שמעניין, ששניהם עונים על אידיאל שונה של ציונות, זה מה שיפה במקרה הזה, מה שמעניין מבחינה היסטורית. נכון, ושניהם תרמו. ושניהם תרמו תרומה ענקית, אני חושב שצריך להגיד, הגישה העיונית של העברית תרמה תרומה עצומה למדינה ולמדע. 
למתמטיקה בעיקר. לא. הבעיה היא של... פיליפ, סליחה, סליחה, סליחה. אחר כך נדבר. בדיוק. יש לנו פה הרבה מאוד אנשים במעט מאוד זמן. אז בבקשה, עידו. תודה רבה. יש לי שאלה, אתה מדבר על הפרויקט הזה כחלק מניישן בריאות, ואתה מביא כדוגמה את החיפוש הנט כצרכים של המדינה. השאלה היא, אם ראיתם איזשהו מנגנון שאתה לא יש לך לדעת ריסורס של המחשב, כמו שאמרת, 50% מהזמן זה היה על פרויקט הנט, יש פרוטוקולים של החלטות על איזה פרויקטים זה ילך, כן ולא, ומי יושב שם? שאלה קשה, אני לא יודע איך לענות עליה בדיוק. זה לא כזה מתוכנן ומקיאוולי שאומרים, אוקיי, אנחנו רוצים לראות מדינה חזקה, לחפש נפט, שלושים אחוז. זה לא ככה. לא, לא, לא במובן שזה כאילו, כן, יש לנו את הצורה מאוד רצינית, אבל מי מחליט לאן הזמן של המחשב הולך? פקן פקן. אפשר להגיד את זה אחרת? לגמרי פקן, זה היה המחשב של פקן. היה לחץ לתת קצת זמן לצבא, אבל לא היה שום... בפירוש פקריס הוא הקובע. אני יכול להעיד מידע אישי, המחליט האחד והבלעדי היה זה הוועדה. מנחם? זהו, זה היה נפלא. אני רוצה לשאול על היבט שככה רמזת עליו אבל לא נגעת ולא בהקשר של הפרויקט הציוני אבל לא בהקשר של טכנולוגיה אלא יותר בהקשר של פיתוח אפילו לא השפה העברית המבע העברי העיצוב של השירה והסיפור עכשיו הזכרנו את הטכניה, הטכניה הוא תורגם לעברית וזה היה מפעל תרבותי אדיר והזכרת את פרנקל ואת לנדה באוניברסיטה העברית עם סוג של תודעה של מתמטיקה עברית, תשמע אדם שקורא לעצמו יחס כלנדה, זה אני לא ידעתי וזה מה, השאלה היא האם יש תודעה של פרויקט ישראלי עברי במובן התרבותי אני מבין את השאלה לא רק שהגויים חושבים שאנחנו מבינים את השאלה תראה, היה לנו שקפים כאלה, נכון ראי? הורדנו אותם מלית ברירה תראה, אני אגיד ככה, ויושבים פה חבריי חלק ממתמטיקה ולפעמים באוניברסיטה כאן אנשים כותבים לי אימיילים באנגלית אני תמיד עונה בעברית, סליחה שאני ככה אומר לכם וזה מצחיק שזה אני, כאילו שדווקא אני, אולי בגלל שאני עולה חדש, מה שנקרא, אותם 45 שנה אבל עדיין ואני רואה בזה חשיבות עצומה, עכשיו, לדברים כאלה אתה מדבר אבל ברמה המוסדית, עכשיו תראה, באוניברסיטה העברית בהתחלה הם מקימים כתב עת בעברית שמפרסם מאמרים מדעיים בעברית חלקם חדשים זה לא שתרגמו זאת אומרת פרנקל כותב פרנקל וגם לנדאו וגם אחר כך כל מיני ענק בור נתן איזה מאמר שבפעם הראשונה הוא התפרסם בירושלים בעברית זה ברור 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 זאת אומרת אותה תשימו לב אותה ראייה של הפרויקט הציוני כמחיה התרבות העברית, השפה העברית, לאו דווקא מדינת יהודים, זה פחות חשוב להם או לכם, בוא נגיד ככה, שוב, סכמטי, אני סכמטי לגמרי, זה כולל אמירה, אוי, I'm speaking in, sorry, we move the language at some point, זה כולל, we are speaking about something Hebrew, זה כולל לפרסם בעברית. In the, in the Weissman Institute, from the beginning, everything is in English. Everything, <laughs> up to today, up to this day. So, and it's, it's also, so, Peckham came here 
only because of his Zionist ideology. There was no other, this is not true for many other people, but not Pekinis. Pekinis was an American scientist born in Lithuania, and he was a Zionist, and he wanted to be here in order to participate in the Weizmann Institute project uh, as a scientist. But he, always, I, I don't know, how, perhaps you know, Yonada, but at least in every document, I think, except things that are very festive or something like that, in English. And I think this is a very interesting difference as well. Eud? So, thank you. It was a lot of fun and, and very interesting and so many directions we can go. So I have one very small and nitpick question. Maybe you, you said something and I missed and then something maybe slightly uh, more conceptual. So the, the nitpick is, do we know why you didn't get the job in Jerusalem? Do we have the files or is it a guess? Uh, do we have files? Uh, yeah, 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 we do. We know is well. Uh, we have a, a recommendation letter from I think it was Professor Epstein. Yeah. But uh, I think they just didn't want to to have an applied mathematics uh, cathedra. Yeah, that's the, the theory. So huh? just, <laughs> but you, you know, and you also uh, no, it wasn't. Uh, yeah, we have we have a, a, a letter that said it was not uh, it was rejected. Yeah. Okay, because we, we know academia, I can think about many reasons why we don't want to. I'm, I'm, I have to say, given his future, I can see they making it like, like it was said here, perhaps a, a, a smart choice. Um, the, the second is really, it's basically two questions, but I'm making connected to the one. So, uh, uh, in terms of this being an origin story or something like this, uh, if I understood correctly, it seems that we have like, uh, uh, he, he had a reputation in the United States, which he imported here, basically, with all these letters from uh, von Neumann and so on, which I, I assume is, is very different from someone who would have developed his reputation here. So it, it, it's, it's, it, it seems to me like in both if you think about nation building or institution <clears throat> building or whatever, this seems more like a colonial <laughs> more appropriate. That's for how it started. Now, for how it was handled, it seems to me that the big story here, which seems to be like in the background, but maybe I, I misunderstand, is that there are all these nice people doing all kinds of interesting work, and it's the story is about Pecoris. So it seems to me two things. One, that as in, you as a historian, right, the, the perspective that you offer, uh, uh, I want you to reflect on it. And the second is that it seems that in terms of the social dynamics, let's call it, it seems futile. So it seems like the computer was his, the time was his, everybody, all the problems had to be his, and so on. And he had this reputation, again, that came from outside. Yeah. So it's interesting, but if we think about, you know, building something new and so on and finding oil and all that sort of thing, I don't know, but I'm, 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 I wonder. Yeah, yeah. No, first of all, I think that we made an effort uh, and, 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 and we discussed this a lot, right, and myself, about making clear in every article and in every situation what was the contribution of everyone. This is not possible, I think, that I, what I did here because I wanted, um, and, and as I said, for example, Alterman, we, we know we have a lot of protocols, very interesting. She was always reporting to him. We did this, we did that. And as I said, for example, in Helsinki, they said Pekeris. They completely overlooked the contribution of Alterman. And we don't want that to happen in our book. But uh, here it was a little different, okay? As a, a schematic. Again, it is still true that he was the dominant figure. I mean, by all means. And for example, how to distribute time and effort and whom to bring. You know, I, I'll tell you another thing. I, you know, I, I have been at this university for 40 years, right? So institutions, at some point, they need this kind of, uh, of behavior by um, charismatic and uh, authoritarian type. And then come other people, right, who are more bureaucratic, like myself. You know, as a dean, I am very bureaucratic. I was not like a... 
Yeah, so say you are here, you are no, no, we have uh, everything. So I think this is true also for the Weizmann Institute because today you have a lot of people who are big stars and they, you know, no one can say to the others, I use the computer and you don't. Things don't work like that, I guess. Here, I don't know. I, yeah, well, I don't know. But, but that was a different thing. But it's important for Ryan and me all along. And in fact, we want to do it for especially for women as a, as a separate and important case to try to map out the entire uh, participation of people in the project. And yet, Pekelis is the big people. You know, I have another book about Hilbert, right? It, he was the big figure in, in, in getting it, but it's not the same thing. And if you look at me, you read the 500 pages of the book on Hilbert, you will see that I try to give a, everyone a, the, the importance of the work. Okay, we, we have to uh, to finish now because we have over time just mentioned in general that the Weizmann Institute, that was the way it, it, it works in many things. Bergman also started to make to make his, his name in Berlin. That's true. But he continued to do it in Rehoboth and that's also- Yeah, but that's the same is true for the university. It's also, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's uh, something that came during the- Yeah. Uh, and it's- and, and yeah, the Leo. Yeah. And you can also hear a chronal pecaries. Just one moment. Just one moment. Just one moment. Is that the English? That's it. The regular English. Yes. Just one moment. Is that about the colonial? There is a question because there is no, there is no metropolis. There is only the colony. Agula, please, but in English, please. Yeah. What there is? I would like to add some small detail biographical about. Pecaris, which sort of skipped over. You mentioned he was born in Lithuania and grew up in the US. That was yeah. a habit in those days that many families in Eastern Europe, in Poland and Lithuania, on the bigger Poland, who had big families and could not support the family, would send one of their children over the seas just to have a support. And this is, in, in occasion, tragically, it happened that, he, that the, the one who sent was the only one who survived the Holocaust. So he, he, he was sent to his uncle, in, in Massachusetts, because it, well, with a big family, I don't know how, I remember him rem recalling it uh, briefly when he was giving a talk. Yes, uh, and, that, and that's why, how he, in a way, survived by the chance of that, that he was the only one. You are right. I want to just the last uh, word about this, my last word. We never tried to write a biography of Pekeris. I never tried to write a biography of Hilbert. Or, that's a, that's difficult, and we even wanted to add some important some points uh, about his personality and so on. We don't know exactly where to put it correctly, right? And I said no, no. we're but this, is the, this is the Jewish point of survival. That is yeah. the, 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 that I want to mention. Yes, yeah, thank you for that remark. Important indeed. Okay, so thank you everyone for attending you. here. Oh, I love it. Yeah.